And the same year, Franz Mertens, the, the person who, who discovered the function, okay, made a conjecture, and that is the modulus of the Mertens function, okay, divided by x. Remember, x is the is the terms, okay, if you can call it that way, to the power of square root or to the power of half is less than one. Big conjecture indeed, okay? Conjecture of the Mertens function. And you know, he, that was what he did, okay? And then he took a lot of values and he said, okay, now that is what it's gonna do. Now we leave Mertens on one side, okay? Because this was the first function that, that he really conjectured. On, on the same year, there was another guy called R.D. Ron Sternbeck, okay? Sternbeck, and he, Sternbeck, sorry, Sternbeck, R.D. R. D. Vorman, if I'm not wrong, on the same year, he made another conjecture, okay, similar to this. But he would write that the modulus of the Merton's function divided by x to the power of half is less than half, okay. And then he spent days and days auditionally, uh, auditionally calculating up to the values of five million, okay, five million. And then he realized that you know it's actually less than half, okay. This this modulus over here after first 200 values. So after the first 200 values, when you take the Merton's function, okay, after the first 200 values of x, it actually gets less than 1. What does that mean? Well, we can plot the graph, okay, of, let's say, just 100,000 again, okay. Now, this time, we're going to not put the Merton's function, we're going to put the Merton's function divided by x to the power of half. Okay. Now this is this is this thing over here, not the Merton function. Just you just add divided by the x to the power of half because that's the inequality we are looking at. Okay. And then if I okay, you, let's just label this as zero point six, and we'll label this as minus zero point six. So after the two hundred, after two hundred values, okay, you can see that this this thing over here, okay, would be within zero point five. Okay. So what does that mean graphically? Well, firstly, it just ventures off. Okay. Then later, when it crosses 200, it would really stick within the boundaries of 0 0.5 like that. Okay, not, not bad, not bad, okay. R.D. von Sternack. So we got the, the conjecture, Merton's conjecture and Sternack's conjecture, okay, which as you can see is a stronger one over here, okay, but that is what he said. After the first 200 values, Merton's function x divided by x to the power of half is less than half. Now that was all good, however, and it then stood, this conjecture stood, you know, mathematics is that when you make a conjecture, that's just like how I can make any conjecture, it will stand until somebody can disprove it for you. And that came about three quarters of a century in 1960, okay, Wolfgang Jerkitz. Wolfgang Jer Jerkitz, okay? He came in and then he would pick a number that is in the range of seven billion 7 billion, okay, apply the Merton's function, okay, and then you will get a certain number, if I'm not wrong, it's 49 something thousand, okay, 49 thousand something, okay, you divide that by 7 billion to the power of half, it would be more than half, okay, so 1960, Wolfgang Jerkett came in and spoils the next plans because he found a number in the range of 7 billion, which that was where you know we had to apply the Mobius function or hence the Mertens function all the way to 7 billion integers, positive integers, and he disproved Sternnack's conjecture. Sternnack's conjecture it is wrong. However, if Sternnack failed, okay, Mertens conjecture still stood as that the Mertens function divided by x to the power of half is less than one. Okay? Now, would that be the case? Would the conjecture stand? Okay, 1960, only took 20 years, 1983, okay, and Oslico, Os I think, or found a number in the range of 10 to the power of 64, 64, I think, 0.14, okay, where Merton's conjecture, Merton's uh, function divided by x to the power of half turned out to be more than one. And that, my friends, was how Oslisco disproved the Merton's function, okay? And, you know, I guess for him, I can feel his sympathy because he must have spent a lot of time, you know, finding out the conjecture only to later have to tell someone that Oslisco is came to disprove it. However, what is the interesting thing here? The interesting thing here is that Oslisco, if you believe it or not, 
this number that he found that when we take the, the Merton's function and divide it by x to the power of half is more than one, isn't the first number okay in the line of integers that is that you know gives us something that's more than one? What do I mean by that? So if we got the in line of integers over here, remember we are applying the, the Merton's function, okay? Or you know we should, we also must apply the Mobius function in order to do so, okay? This number you found was ten to the power of sixty four somewhere over here like this, okay? But he, I don't know, for some funny reason, he said that that isn't the first x, this isn't the first integer that would give this more than one, okay? So it was later that there was another boundary of 10 to the power of 30, okay? And he said that the first counter example, okay, the first counter example is gonna be after this. That means while this one disproved Merton's conjecture, okay, Merton's conjecture is here. Merton's conjecture disproved, okay, disproved, okay, but this wasn't the first x integer. The, the x integer, you know, the first one would have lied somewhere over here, okay, and then later as developments was made when they showed that 10 to the power of 20 or before, there was no counter example of the Merton's, function, Merton's conjecture. So Merton's conjecture stood over here. Merton's conjecture was disproved over here. However, the search for the first x integer, okay, to disprove Merton's conjecture is still shrouded in this area over here, between 10 to the power of 30 and 10 to the power of 64, okay? And that was the thing that still stands, okay? The mystery of disproving the Merton's conjecture. And that's the final number that when we apply the Merton's function divided by x to the power of half, it will give us less, it will give us more than one. So the search continues on that secret number, okay? We like it.